Good day. After my previous clip, uh, yes, clip, I got a request. Uh, uh, one of our friends in Canada saying they couldn't understand us. So here's one for you. Uh, because I'm preparing for Zimbabwe, I'm going on an outreach to Zimbabwe with my good friend Jan Badenhorst. And uh, as we are preparing, it's going to be in English. When we go over to Zimbabwe, when we preach over there and we give word, it's in English, but we've got pastors that's translating for us into their local language over there, which is Shona. I just first of all want to say thank you to everybody uh, um, giving open hands. People, there's a guy blessing us with diesel. There's uh, uh, money came in. Somebody blessed us, us with uh, a whole lot of Shona Bibles. The Gospels of John we're taking over there. It was being... It, it, it was given to us to take over there. So I just want to say thank you to everybody here in South Africa that has uh, open hearts for our brothers and sisters over there in Zimbabwe because we've been going to Zimbabwe now on and off for 10 years. My brother Jan, uh, more than 10 years now, and he really has a heart for Zimbabwe. And I also like to go over there and I like the bush. I like... I like the country. It's a beautiful, beautiful country. And I know there's been a lot of negative news about Zimbabwe and things going on there. But listen, we are Christians. We give hope. We bring hope. And I, like I said in the previous clip, I hope one day when we are in a bad spot, somebody will come to our country and bring us hope and bring us supplies and bring us Bibles and bring us food or whatever. Listen to this, Romans 10, 15. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. We're going over there with no hidden agenda. We are going over there to bring good tidings. We bring the gospel of peace. That's our mandate that was given to us 2,000 years ago by our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, go and preach the gospel of peace and not a gospel of condemnation it's a gospel of peace and as i was preparing for this i heard that there uh, will be a lot of law enforcement officers coming to visit from uh, three different areas or regions over there and i'm so glad because i myself was a law enforcement officer in this beautiful country of south africa for about 10 years from two uh, from 1992 till 2002 and i love law, law enforcement officers i like soldiers and that was my life for 10 years. And even before that, I grew up always wanting to be a soldier or a law enforcement officer. I remember when me and my brother, who was also a law enforcement officer, and my father, and my uncles, and a lot of my family, but me and my brother grew up with, with stories like chips, and I was always punch, and he was baker, and we were policemen from small, from a young age. So... The day when I gave my heart to the Lord and I was starting to read the Bible, actually starting to read the Bible and actually understanding what's standing in the Word through the eyes of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit was inside me and He revealed and opened up scriptures to me. And I, when I was reading through the Gospel of Luke, I came upon this scripture and the Lord, I was starting to laugh because I couldn't help myself just to laugh about this because this for 10 years for 10 years these three things in luke 3 verse 14 was a challenge was a challenge and it's a challenge today i think for policemen cops all over the world law enforcement officers soldiers all over the world a lot of people came to john the baptist uh, and and he baptized them yeah, in uh, Luke 3 verse 12, even tax collectors came to be baptized and they said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them in verse 13, Exact and collect no more than the fixed amount appointed to you. Don't be corrupt. 2,000 years ago, this was written down and it's still applicable today. And verse 14, I'm first going to read it out of the King James. Listen to this. Luke 3 verse 14, And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, in those days, the soldiers did everything. They were the law enforcement and they were the soldiers. And what shall we do? And John the Baptist said unto them, Do violence to no man. First of all, do violence to no man. Neither accuse any falsely. Secondly, don't accuse falsely. Thirdly, and be content with your wages. Wow, wow, and wow. How many times in 10 years I heard uh, uh, law enforcement officers not being content with their wages. 
Being a law enforcement officer is a calling. Like being a teacher. Teaching young people. Teaching children. It's a calling. You can quickly see when a teacher is not... It, it, is, it is not a calling. It's just a job. They don't love the children. It's like being... Uh, like preaching the the uh, the gospel it's a calling it's a calling because you must have compassion towards people compassion all people like i said in the previous clip we pray for all people we don't uh separate yeah, separate classes or races or whatever we pray to all people and being a soldier or being a law enforcement officer is a calling you know you're not going to get paid much but it's a calling. You love to put on a uniform. First he said, he said three things. First he said, do violence to no man. The, the Amplified said, never demand or enforce by terrifying people. You are not supposed to terrify people. You are hope. People will want to come to you. They want to feel safe by you. They don't want to be terrified by you. Secondly, neither accuse falsely. Don't accuse wrongfully. When you are in a court of law, don't accuse wrongfully. Thirdly, be content with your wages. Be satisfied with your supplies, your rations, and with your allowance or your wages. Three things. Law enforcement officers, three things. Soldiers, three things. Do violence to no man. Don't accuse falsely. Be content with your wages. Amen and amen. Isn't this awesome? Written 2,000 years ago and still applicable today. Still applicable today. If you want to be blessed, I know in this country of ours, uh, according to uh, accusations flying around, according to race and color, that uh, uh, because of your color of your skin, you don't get um, promoted. My brother, my sister, I'm telling you today, live according to the word and the Lord will bless you. The Lord will bless you. I've got a friend, and I and I and I wanted if I wanted to mention this, but I'm going to mention this, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to um, say names or areas. But anyway, he was working at a head office here in South Africa, a police head office, and he came to realize that there were a corrupt police officer there, and he laid charges against that officer. And overnight, he was uh, removed from his post there at headquarters, and he got. A, he was transferred to a very difficult area difficult area and this guy who is my friend is a very positive law enforcement officer he made the best of the situation he's still working there he's, he's spreading hope he's never speaking negatively uh, to his officers he doesn't speak negatively towards the people who who transferred him he is a blessing in a uniform. And that's how you must be as a law enforcement officer. If you cannot do that, if it's not your calling, do something else. You're not there to terrify people. You're not there to accuse people. You're not there to moan and complain about your wages. You knew. I knew. In 1992, when I went to our police college, this is going to be my basic salary. And I had to be content with that. And I loved my work. I loved, and still till today, I would like to be a police officer because it is in the blood. It's in your blood. So, but now I'm a police officer and a law enforcement officer for the Lord. And I'll go all over the place preaching the good news. I've got a new mandate. I've got a new calling on my life. And it's awesome. It's awesome to work for the Lord. And uh, I hope to uh, bring back some footage for you uh, of what we are doing in Zimbabwe, how we spread the good news, our pastors over there, Jan, I'm going to ask him one evening just to give us his testimony uh, a year on a short video. I'm going to post it and you can meet Jan and see what he's all about. And it's just a blessing to work for the Lord. You stay blessed and I pray for you. Bye-bye.